Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about npm init, which is a utility included with npm that allows us to quickly and easily set up a new node application. So before I do anything else I want to um, clean up after myself. Now I'm going to rm slash r node modules, I'm going to rm app.js, and I'm going to rm package lock.json. So now there's nothing in my week 9 folder. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new directory. Make directory, um, I don't know, init demo. So now I have this new directory and I'm going to cd into it. So I'm inside this, um, this new directory. If I look, there's nothing in there. And now we're going to use npm init. npm init, as I mentioned, is a kind of a helper utility that allows us to create node applications quickly and easily and it fills in a lot of the boilerplate for us. So if I hit enter, it's going to ask me some questions. And if you want to, you can read through that. But um, basically, it's just kind of giving you information about it. So the first question, what's your package name? By default, it'll pick the name of the folder that it's sitting in. I'm just going to leave that. Version, it's fine. I'm just pushing enter to go to the next one. Description, description here. Entry point. I like app.js for all of mine. You can do index.js if you like but I like app.js, and that's kind of the convention for most people. Test command, just leave it blank. Git repository, we don't have one of those yet. Give it, leave it blank. Keywords, I just leave it blank. Author, put your name. You put whatever licensing you want there, like the MIT license, the ISC is, is the default one. It's kind of, it's a pretty open source license. You put whatever you want, and then it'll say, okay, we're about to make your package.json file this is what it's going to look like, is this okay? And it just put in the stuff that you did, so yes, that's okay. And now inside of my init demo, you'll see I have a new file called package.json. That was created by this npm init, so let's look at it and see, well, what does this do? package.json is basically the configuration file for your whole application. It's got a lot of different important aspects to it. Not all of them are actually on here yet. For example, as we install packages like Express or anything else, we're going to add to this. It's going to start listing those packages. So let's do that real quick. npm install Express. It'll take it a minute to download, and once it's done, we'll look at package.json again, and you'll be able to see how it's changed. All right, that is done. You'll notice that this new property, dependencies, has been added. And inside of there, it has Express, and it has the version number. Now, we're not really going to get into the whole versioning numbers and what this caret means and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can look into that. There are meaningful reasons to do that, but it's kind of outside the scope of this class. Basically, you're not going to want to edit the package.json file until you really know what you're doing. This is the type of thing that you want to allow the um, NPM utility to edit for you. As we get more involved and more advanced, we'll add some scripts later. But for now, just leave it alone. Don't don't touch anything. Anything. Don't change anything in there. Just just leave it alone. Because if you do, if you change something and you and you make a typo or you don't do, know exactly what you're doing, you can really break stuff. Now, what's the purpose of this file? Now, number one, I said it kind of configures your application. But even more importantly, it allows us to quickly and easily back up and share our code in a much smaller format. Basically, whenever we share our code, we don't include the node modules folder. The reason for this is because our node modules folder can get really big really quickly, depending on how many packages we install. Right now, how big is it? It's not big at all. I mean, it's only, four, it's only 4,100 bytes, so it's very small right now. However, once we start installing a bunch of packages, especially packages that have a lot of different dependencies, that can grow to megabytes. That can, I mean, that can get really big, and whenever you're um, backing up your code to like GitHub or sharing it with other developers or things like that, it gets really annoying having to um, keep track of your node modules folder and, and sending that back and forth. So instead, what you do is you just send them all of your files, but your package.json. Your package.json has a list of everything that's in your node modules. So when the other people receive it, all they have to do is do npm install. And what this does is this looks through your package.json and installs any dependencies. If you already have it, 
then it doesn't install anything. But if it if it's missing, then it does. So let's let's just delete my node modules folder. Um, no, I don't want to delete package.json. I want to delete node modules. All right, so now I no longer have node modules, but if I run npm install, it checks through, and it will add a the node modules folder back with Express inside of it. All right, that's done installing, and let's look at our node modules. You can see all these different things, but the important one is Express. All the rest of these are dependencies of Express. So now we have our node modules folder back, and we. So all we would have had to do is send somebody the package.json file as well as any other files we create, and they can install known modules themselves without us having to send it to them, blogging down the transfer. Let's install another package. Let's install um, Mongoose, npm i Mongoose. We'll talk about Mongoose in, I want to say, the next module. Uh, Mongoose is a way for us to interact with database, with a MongoDB database, pretty easily. So as we're installing Mongoose, you'll notice once it's done, the dependencies will update to include not just Express, but also Mongoose. There we go. See, now we've got Express and Mongoose. And let's look at our node modules file. Oops, I forgot to click on it. So apparently, it's not recording the file size correctly. For node modules because 4096 bytes is I thought that was pretty small but um, it hadn't it hasn't changed even though we've installed mongoose so so it's not reporting that correctly that's fine so now we've installed mongoose as well and you'll see the dependencies have been updated to include both of those and we can install as many things we want and it'll just tack them on to the dependencies and that's how that's how the, that's how it keeps track of them in this video we talked about npm init npm init which allows us to quickly and easily set up our um, package.json file for node modules. And the package.json file we talked about tracks the configuration of your application, or a lot of different things, but probably most importantly is the dependencies. And by using the package.json, we can send our um, application to other developers or to other people, or we can back it up to GitHub or whatever, using a lot less space because we don't have to include the node modules folder. Because once, if someone has your package.json, they can just run npm install. And that will look through your package.json and make sure you have all the required dependencies installed locally. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.